Hey ladies, today is Wednesday, September 4th, 2019, eight weeks postpartum. This is the third video I've recorded today. I'm trying to just get them out the way when I have time to do it. And I just wanted to give some quick pumping tips that I've learned. I'm not an expert by any means on anything, um, baby or breast related or motherhood or any of that. But I just have been pumping for a minute now and I just wanted to kind of give a few tips that I've learned um, and I'm going to make this really quick cause I need to feed and pump, 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 pump. So the number one tip I think is pumping often. They told me this in the hospital. I did not pump. I didn't like to pump in the hospital cause I was only getting colostrum out, but, um, and it didn't come out when I pumped it, but you know, pumping, even if you're not getting anything out is like exercising your breasts. And the reality is your breast milk is supply and demand so if you're pumping you're not getting anything your body is then told we need to make more because we need more if you don't uh pump then your body feels that you have enough milk so it's not going to make any more so sometimes people say they don't have enough milk but if you pump more often you might get more milk so usually they say pump every two to three hours you can pump you know every two hours but again like me your whole life will be pumping or every three hours, which still your life is just pumping. And you can pump every hour if you need to. I mean, keep in mind that, you know, the amount you get out will always vary. And don't pump so much that your breasts are sore because sometimes it'll make your nipples even sore constantly pumping. You can do something called power pumping. Sorry, Michaela's asleep, so she's making some noises. Um, where you like pump for like 20 minutes and stop for 10 minutes, then pump again for 20 minutes and stop for 10 minutes. Or you so basically on and off pumping. Um, so you can do that. Some people like that. Um, but and it'll do that consistently. But pumping often Aww. is a thing that you have to do, and it's annoying. Um, but that is actually to help you get your milk to supply. Like your and even after you pump, if you can pump to the point where you don't have any more milk coming out or at least not as consistently again your body is learning we need more milk we need more milk so pumping often is number one number two which is just as important as number one sorry she's getting loud is um drinking lots of water and fluids like you need to drink a lot of water um, like, like 90 ounces or something crazy like that. I don't know the exact amount, but just drink a lot. I also read though, if you drink too much, that could lessen your milk supply. So there is a balance. Um, I believe it's around like 90 something ounces of water that you need. Cause you need like a, I think normally we need like 60 something ounces. And when you're breastfeeding, you need another 30 something ounces. So like 90 something ounces of water. Just round it off to a hundred ounces. <laughs> um, that you need to drink roughly every day because that's what's helping you make the milk. You need to eat because what you eat is also going, everything you ingest is going into your your milk. So, you know, be mindful of that. So eating, if you have a more nutritious diet, the milk will be more nutritious. If you know, and you need the water to make milk because it's a liquid. So you need that. So drinking lots of water and eating healthy are two, you know, my second recommendations um which are probably just as important as pumping really often right off because you're pumping a lot but you're not drinking water or any liquids i don't think that'll really help because you need the liquid to make the liquid um three would be using the right flange size when i first started pumping i was using this size which is the 24 millimeter i have a Medela pumping style um i was using this one and i thought it worked for me but it actually was too small and i didn't realize that until I just one day randomly decided to use this 27, which is the other size that comes with it. And this was so much better for me. I also coat my phalanges in coconut oil, like this, this, this part where my breasts and nipple are going to go. I put coconut oil in there. I was actually, that's a recommendation I got from an OB who was an exclusive pumper. This is someone I met when I was having Michaela. Um, she told me that she did that and that it really helps and that it was safe for the baby. So I put coconut oil, not a ton, just enough to like, you know, go in and it helps like, you know, the pooling a little bit. So I put, co it does get, the coconut oil is going to get in the milk though. So that's why, you know, you need to be mindful, but it's not a ton. Um, so, and she told me it was safe. So I'm assuming it's safe. She was doctor. Um, 
so yeah, so I, I used the 27, but I started with the 24. So I was using the wrong size. And when it's, the way you can tell is like, if your nipple is, this is supposed to, supposed to pull in some of the areola, like a little bit of areola in your nipple. If you're only getting your nipple in, then you're probably using the wrong size. And if you're getting your nipple and it's rubbing up against this, which is what was happening to me, you're probably using this wrong size, smaller size. Now, if it's too big and it's pulling too much of your areola in and your nipple's kind of just like, you know, a little thing in the middle, then you might be using, you know, too big of it and need to go down. But you have to play with it and really find out. But the size flange you use really will, if you're using the wrong size, it affects how much milk you get out when you pump. So it's good to know whether you're using the right size or try try both, you know, sizes to figure it out if you don't know. Um, another thing is warm compresses and hand expressing. Um, so yeah, the flange was like three, my third, uh, tip, the warm compress and hand massaging. So pumping, regardless of what kind of pump you use, whether it's hospital grade or whatever they're calling it, does not, it's not as effective as a baby latching. So you're not going to remove as much milk through pumping. It does not, baby's latching is the best and most effective way to remove milk, but that doesn't happen for all of us the way it's supposed to. So if you're still going to continue with breastfeeding and you're going to pump, pump it out, then you have to also massage. And I did not find that out right away. It took a while. I actually was talking to a lactation consultant before I realized that and reading a lot online. So the warm compress you can put up at the top and on your breast. And that also helps when your breasts are sore. That helps to open up the ducts. So that makes, you know, you might notice if you put warmth on it, or even if you're holding your baby on it, skin to skin, you might notice the letdown. And part of that is because skin to skin helps uh, your body produce more prolactin, which is the hormone that helps with breastfeeding, but also the warmth of your body, if of the baby's body, if your baby's laying on that part, um, will warm that up and you'll have a letdown. So, um, so you'll notice that. So you can use a warm compress to do that, or you can use your hands. And as you massage, you can use your hands. Your hands will warm up that area and kind of help with that also. But with the massaging, I kind of do twofold. I kind of go around and kind of squeeze the breast area, like around, you know, around the breast. Um, you know, I kind of go like, you know, around that way. But then I also use my thumb and sometimes my other fingers and firmly push down down the breast, down to the areola. And I can actually see milk shoot out when I do that. Like you kind of, not so much that it hurts. Don't push so much that it hurts, but you kind of firmly push down, firmly push down. So as you do that, you will notice um, it come it coming out. Now, if you're wearing a pumping bra, which is what I tend to wear now, it is kind of hard. And if you're not wearing a pumping bra, then I don't know how you're going to do it when you're holding the things to your hand. You're, um, you might want to think about getting a pumping bra because if you're holding the pieces on, it's just one, uncomfortable and um, ineffective. Um, but two, you don't, your hands, you can be using your hands for other things right now. Like at this stage in life, we need to use our hands for other things, not just that. Um, but, um, if you have a pumping bra, pumping bras aren't perfect cause it's hard to massage while you're wearing a pumping bra, but you might want to get a pumping bra because it looks easier. There was a pumping bra I saw on Amazon that was more of a net type thing. And I did get that, but I haven't figured out how to put it on yet. It's like this like contraption of netting and stuff. Um, and it goes straight on your breasts and you're, you don't even have to wear a bra apparently to use it. My breasts are pretty large now, so I'm not even sure if it's going to work. You know, it has mixed reviews. It was about $13 on Amazon. Um, I can't recommend it yet because I'm still trying to figure out how to use it. I got to get time to figure out how to use it. So that's the thing. Anything that takes up extra time, but you got to figure out how to put it on. I like The reason I got that was one, because it's supposed to allow me to um, more area that I can massage while I'm doing the pumping, but to also pumping bras and anything gets the milk all over it and they get nasty and you got to wash them constantly. Um, so you want, if you're getting pumping bras, you at least want to get two, if not more than two. Um, pumping bras are also unattractive because you can see them. I haven't found one where you can't see it under your clothes. You can tend to see it. The only good thing is that the pumping bras I bought are also nursing bras. So I can nurse on one side and pump on the other side. So that's cool. But, um, you know, I've worn it out when I wanted to pump 
somewhere and I could see it like all under you see all the lines and stuff under your shirt because the way it's constructed and it, I just found it to be to be completely unattractive and it, it, they don't do anything for your breasts it kind of gives you like a shelf uniboob thing so whatever but um so those are basically my my little tips the only other thing you might want to do and I can't en endorse it yet is get some supplements if you want to increase it and again not everyone believes in supplements there's a lot of stuff about not using supplements I just mentioned in a video that I, I bought some supplements from a company called Legendary Milk. And um, I'm trying to show it to you. I just had it out for the last one. Legendary Milk. I haven't tried them yet. Um, I have three different. I bought a bundle. Their best selling bundle. That's what it's called. It has something called Liquid Gold, which is for breast milk production. Um, and well, all of them do breast milk production, but that one's breast milk production. Pump Princess is breast milk production and milk flow, which is important for Michaela because if the flow doesn't come out right, she gets really frustrated. And then they have something called Milk of Palooza, which is breast milk production and sorry, Milk of Palooza, breast milk production and nutrition in milk. So it makes your milk more nutritious. Um, as I said in a prior, I don't know if I showed the Pump Princess, like the picture. If um, I said in a prior video, there's four milk and there's high milk, hind milk when you pump. The four milk is like the watery milk that comes out in the beginning. And if you pump, you you see that. And it's like a watery, whitish, watery milk. And then the hind milk comes out later, like towards the end of the feeding. And it is a more nutritious and a thicker milk. And so um, the baby gets both if the baby doesn't. Now, if the baby doesn't latch long enough, the baby might not get both of them. So, um, or if you over lactate and you produce a lot of milk, you might produce a lot more for milk, which is not as nutritious as the hind milk. But boosting the nutrition in your milk is always a good thing. You could do that just from your diet. You don't need these supplements, but the supplements tend to, um, well, these say they help. These are all Fingy Greek free. I did buy Fingy Greek um, prior to, and I did notice that Michaela was having some issues. I don't know if the Fingy Greek tried, uh, caused it, but I just gave up Fingy Greek to see if that would resolve the issues. It, so far, it has not. So I don't know if it was the Fingy Greek, but Fingy Greek is known to create digestive issues in both the mom and the baby. I didn't have any digestive issues, but she was having issues. So I thought maybe the Fingy Greek was causing it. I'm not sure now, but, you know. So that's just it. That's Those are the, um, the supplements, and you could try that. But I think even without the supplements, because my... Lactation consultant never told me to use any supplements. She was more so talking about the massaging, the warm compress, the pumping often, the drinking water. I think that's really all you need to do. Um, but, you know, there are supplements out there. And so I'm going to try them and let people know what I think of them. They're not cheap. That bundle costs about $50 as a 30 day supply. Each bottle is 10 days. So I'm going to try each. And so, you know. They're not cheap at all, but it's legendary milk. Dairy is spelled D-A-I-R-Y. Legend D Dairy. Um, so it's not two D's, it's one D. The D that's in the legend is the D for dairy. So legendarymilk.com is what you might want to go to to see if you want to um try those supplements. But I don't know if they're gonna work. I'm just telling you. So those are the things to do. Or those are what I've been doing. I still only produce like 20 ounces. So I'll let you know if the supplements help or not. Um, but even if I find out they do help, I don't know if I'm going to commit to buying them constantly because they are pricey. Um, so yeah. So that's where we're at. Talk to you soon.